create an abstract that has meaning for you. There are a number of things that I do and I'm going to show you in this video how I created this one. It starts with a bit of hand massaging and that's partly because I've just had a massage this morning. My back's gone out again and so I've been, I had a massage and so I began by massaging the page. If you don't like that idea, find another thing that will just help you get engaged with the paint. If you're a child, you probably want to stick your hand in the paint. I think that's one of the ways that the children engage themselves in the medium by getting into the palette and touching the paint and then they want to paint with their fingers. Find a way that's going to help you into the zone and then as you're moving into the zone use a limited palette of colours and then you won't have to think about the colours as you're going along and use up paint if you feel like it. You whatever it is that's going to make you feel lovely and relaxed so that you can just begin to create an abstract art. Here's how I painted this one and for a little bonus info at the end I did a little colour wheel explanation of my colours. But you can skip that bit if all you like to do is watch the painting. Here goes guys, thanks for joining me. This video is about how to get in the zone, how to start just by massaging the paper and get your head into that creative space. I am feeling the beautiful texture of the watercolour paper and yes, I am rubbing the oils off my hands all over my paper, but I don't care. I don't mind if it repels a bit of water. In fact, that would be just fine. I am massaging the page because I'm just getting in the zone, feeling it and wondering about where my abstract is going to go. And perhaps there'll be some beautiful darks over there cascading down to some lovely lights. Um, tones over here. All right, I have already sprayed my palette. I'm going to spray in the shape of a wave. A lot of water I just put on there. I've got this magnificent ultramarine blue. It's deep ultramarine. And I'm going to start just by dragging my brush through that water. It's actually hard to see, but that's kind of cool. And I'm just creating a line. That's all I'm doing grab some of this paint that's on my palette. It's a green, so that's kind of perfect. I'm just going to repeat that line and sometimes it's going into the blue, sometimes it's not. Washing my brush again. Over here I've got probably some magenta mixed with something else, doesn't matter. A little bit of warmth into that and then a lot of water where I want something magical to happen. Up the top here Magical, magical, and I'm going to keep this uh, quite clear. I've got quinacridone gold accessible on my palette. I'm going to just put that on down the bottom there. Perhaps that's going to end up as sand. And I bought a little thing that blows out little lines so I don't have to stick my head in the camera <laughs> and uh, st stick my head straight down to the page and blow things. It, uh, it's just a little pump basically. But I thought how cute is that for just moving the water around without having to get the hair dryer out and drying it faster than it would have. Okay, and then I'm going to take inspiration from whatever is there and I've chosen my colours and from here on in I try really hard to stick to that limited palette. I find that you will get instant harmony if you pick some colours and stick with it. Okay, I'm still thinking about the beach and the action of those waves and how they, they roll in, I'm getting darker, and roll in, getting darker again, roll in. And I did imagine I'd have a lovely dark section up here too, so I'm going to put darks there. Doesn't matter at all. Picking up paint from wherever I want. I do need some lovely darks in order to make this abstract look a bit interesting. Darks are often the answer. I've got magenta, 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 so I'm going to pick up a little bit more and see if I can drop it into those beautiful areas of quinacridone gold. And um, just, oh, I think I'll throw that pump 
at it again. It's quite nice to do it in down here because it's looking a tiniest bit like sea creatures. Um, just enjoying that. Oh, let's push some up there. Okay, so do I feed these? Do I join them? Oh yeah, let's join them together. Quinacridone gold. And I'm going to mix quinacridone gold on the edges and start to make these shapes join together. I think um, sometimes when the shapes in your abstract are a little too separated, it uh, can lack cohesion. So I'm just joining them with little small marks and then I'm joining it over to here. And then these have to make sense with that. So I'm joining them there as well. I think I'll get more magenta to go up there. I don't want to overdo the magenta because I quite love this um, splattering down here. So I might just add to what I'm really enjoying and splatter again. So each time I add a bit of paint and each time I splatter, it's doing something a tiny bit different. It doesn't blow it quite as well as your mouth might or a straw. But it means I can see what I'm doing, quite well enjoying that. Oh, lovely. Okay. Um, this is bothering me a little bit, so I'm going to put some a tiny touch of tone up there. If it bothers you, it can sometimes be the stark white of the paper. So you, if you just put down the tiniest bit of tone on those stark areas, uh, that can solve... Um, the issue of an area that's jumping out at you in a way you don't like. Oh, that's nice. Tiny bit of this. I'm just letting all those colours move on my page. That's fine. What I'm getting here are hard lines down here and soft lines up there. So I think that's um, pretty good. Just zoom in so it focuses a little. I think I'm going to add to those hard lines maybe with a bit of green. So here's all this beautiful blue and I need to wash well, dirty water, clean water, before I add, uh, this is Hansa Yellow Light. I'm gonna add it into that green here. And um, just, I'm bringing some of that green down here and I'm going to continue at adding it with um, highlighting those hard lines. Just putting in little tiny bits, but it, totally enjoying myself. And the whole time, um, when I'm able to get lovely and loose, it's because I'm able to funnel, not funnel, <laughs> channel something. Um, and so I spend as much time as I can when I'm on holidays, I spend it at the beach if I can. Not surfing, um, not that that's not a brilliant thing to do. I don't know how to surf. But what I like to do is sit near the rock pools and just absorb the um, incredible sea life that exists in those rock pools. All those little tiny creatures that live there and, and I always find that completely fascinating. I'm just still going around and adding little tiny bits of um, little dots really but just within the existing areas. So this means that I'm darkening areas and I hope bringing focus down here. So it's all beautiful and soft up there and I'm just bringing uh, some focus down here. This is looking just too soft so do I bring magenta up there or some of this green? I'll try it with the green first. There's a lovely background line there so I'm just going to enhance that line. There's a lovely background there so I'll enhance that background. Oh it's right up there that background. It's beautiful. Just beautiful. Right, more green. Yeah, it doesn't need any more green. Maybe what it needs is this beautiful quinacridone gold. Just grab some of that, a little thicker, not too, um, oops, I didn't mean to. Yeah, 
just grabbing some of that gold. The, the, the gold, this quinacridone gold is so beautiful, so earthy and so much better than using um, raw sienna, which may or may not be transparent because uh, quinacridone gold is wonderfully transparent. Plus it's a brown, so it just, it's a brownie gold, so it goes with absolutely everything. Oh, that's better. I've created an extra back run up there, and I think that's joining up um, those areas quite nicely. I'm going to draw a little more focus down here with some more. I've got quinacridone gold all over my brush, but I don't care. It's going to make a deep green, and the ultramarine blue just dominates most colours, so... It will just slowly dominate whatever's there and that's just fine. Okay, now I'm going to enhance these blue bits a bit. There's some lovely lines within it, just a bit there. But I do need some beautiful darks in amongst here. So sometimes I will touch it and I'm just wanting to increase the tone in this area here and ultramarine deep is wonderfully dark. So that's why I've chosen that color. And I'm often will paint where I allow one color to mix into another. I just don't care about the keeping the colors too separate. I don't think it matters, particularly because I use a limited palette all the time. Interestingly, I've had advice on YouTube um, via comments. Um, I'm sorry, I can't remember the name of the person who advised me. But anyway, she said um, that you should keep your palette cleaner. And, and that is um, a choice to keep your palette clean. Completely a choice. And um, I stopped keeping my palette clean a long time ago keeping my colors clean and so I invite all opinions I'm always interested in what people think so I appreciated her point of view um oh I've got a lovely selection of darks going there that's great what does it need now any more darks just to finish off a little bit more interest up here in this Back run. I'm just feeding the back run over and over and it's quite lovely what it's doing. This one hasn't um, moved so I think I'll get a bit of water. I don't love that one and give it a tail. Give it a, um, a tail and a, I don't know, a forward something. Bring that over there. Ah, all right. I've channeled the sea into this one. I thought to finish off what I might do is talk about the colors that I just used. Because if you're wondering why they look good together, there's a couple of reasons. So I'm gonna put all of these colors on my palette. I have a green that I made, and the green was made with a pure yellow. That's Hansa Yellow Light. I also had quinacridone gold. I'm putting yellow at the top and moving around the palette here and moving to, oops, <laughs> moving towards magenta, which sits beautifully here as a neutral red, and I use it instead of red permanently. I've got some ultramarine blue. Now, per pure blue would sit there. Ultramarine blue is a ready blue, and it's sitting there. Uh, and that's it for the colors. The green I got by mixing that and that together. The Goldy colours, we're mixing that and that. Sometimes I mix the green that, into that, but there are just four colours in this abstract um, landscape, isn't it? No, it's just pure abstract. There's absolutely no representation in that at all. But it's just four colours. Um, if I'd just used those three, you could uh, almost say that it's a split complementary colour scheme but I've added it in this brown, so it's not really. And you can't really make that color from those. So, you know, if you put magenta with a little bit, I have to wash my brush for the yellow with that. 
You don't really get magenta, do you? You don't really get this brown colour. Won't matter how much more pink I add. Wash brush for yellow. Uh, more yellow. I, oh, well, I don't know. You could probably argue I am using a split complementary scheme because if I add more yellow to that, do I get close to quinacridone gold or am I just wasting my time? What's that like? Uh, well, if we called this an orange now, I, I'm just clutching at straws there. It's that would be a split complementary system, but as soon as I've added that, I'm just using a limited palette. I can't think of a shape that that makes. <laughs> to, to call it some sort of uh, colour scheme. I've just used colours that are that I love, uh, colours that are transparent, except for the ultramarine deep. The others are beautifully transparent. I've used colours that are limited, one, two, three, four. And even the green I made from that that yellow and that blue which is hence a yellow light and I thought I would put the colour information at the end because I can see from my analytics that people skip the colour information so I thought I'll jump in and do the colour afterwards. I also thought it might be interesting um, to examine your colour palette so you could do a little circle at the end and see whether or not you used pure colours, see whether or not you used a limited palette um, and think about it at the end just for interest sake because it could be that you look at your artwork at the end and you go oh man Hawaiian shirt going on there rather than what I hoped you would do is look at it and go oh that's cool that's got colour harmony and whether I got the other elements going or not I get colour harmony by limiting my colours to four colours but they are four pure colours they're not mixtures um, mixed colours uh, you know like Payne's Grey I'm not a Payne's Grey fan I'm sorry if you love it just ignore me I don't care at all I really don't what I love is that you have a good time and that you explore color explore painting and I hope you enjoy this video thank you so much guys thanks so much for watching thanks so much for your support I so appreciate it see you next time bye